Hello everybody, welcome back to Waffles RC. Thanks to Tricky Editing, for you, it is next week. For me, it is about three minutes after I just finished the last video. But I'm going to keep going, because I have the time, and I'm going to start working on the new trailer. So this is the trailer that I have as of right now. Did it as a gooseneck, as you see right here, maybe. Got the hitch right there. Big open space, I normally have the spare tires on there but have nice big rim. So I have a gooseneck, which goes on this truck, as you can see by the little ball right there. For anybody who's wondering about the gooseneck hitch and ball that are on my old tow truck and this fifth wheel trailer, you can get them pretty reasonably priced as well from Sen Racing. There's the part number. I am not sponsored by Sen Racing in any way. It's the only thing that I've been able to find that can do a gooseneck style hitch. It's meant for their F450 or 250 or whatever that they make. Once again, not sponsored in any way, but a thing is really good. I've had zero issues with it and I, was, I bought two. I have a spare one, haven't had to change anything. So if you want one, look up Sen Racing, that part number, it's just a gooseneck adapter. Especially if you're making your own trailer and you want to do a gooseneck, it's a really cool thing to have. So that is the trailer that I have now. So we will get started on the next trailer, which will not be a gooseneck style. It's going to be a bumper pull style. It's going to have to be a little bit longer than this one, maybe. But I'm going to use the same axles, different tires, different wheels, but same style axles that I have for that. And I'll show you how to do that. We have an empty workbench, a tape measure, so now we need metal. Lots of metal. So now just gotta make a trailer out of that. I'm going to want it the same width as this. So I'll remeasure this because I already forgot what this measured out at. So I'm gonna make the trailer the exact same width as that and then weld a box and make it look like the top deck of a trailer. Now I'm using the same stuff, half inch by four feet square tubing and I just as you can tell measured the trailer and the truck and it came out to 11 inches so I'm gonna make this 11 inches there's the basic shape of the trailer and now looking at it I only have two axles I think I'm gonna need three just to make it look a little bit better and I did the tracks four inches wide. None of the tires on any of mine are four inches wide, but it just gives you a little extra breathing room. And I just had a thought as well, for all the people that have said in the comments that they don't have access to a welder, I know I'm doing everything with a welder, but that's because that's what I'm good at and I am fortunate enough to have a welder. But for stuff like this, like a trailer, you can make it out of wood if you have access to those types of tools or if that's what you're better at. Metal is a bit stronger, but once again, it's RC cars. How much weight are you really trying to pull with these things? So a wood trailer would be perfectly fine. I'm just doing metal because I can. So when it comes to the trailer front, wood, I think would be perfectly acceptable. Now this thing is incredibly long, but now, kind of counterproductive to it, but now I'm going to cut some notches in all four of these to angle it, basically making a little ramp so that this whole thing, the whole trailer is going to be elevated and make a little ramp for the back of the trailer to make it easier for the trucks to drive on. So now I should be able to just bend this up. Of course, that is easier said than done. 
and by the looks of it I have to notch it out a little bit more there is the little ramp so this is the back of the trailer and it's upside down so I'm going to tack weld these keep them from moving and then start on the bottom part of the frame of it <laughs> these bars in here and obviously you see they're a bit wobbly so I'm going to make a bunch of those to give this part strength because this is where the axles are going to sit so I'll make a whole bunch of those For another tip from me never throw away scrap metal either that is perfect for doing a bunch of those little things I'm not gonna lie I'm a bit of a hoarder when it comes to scrap metal and car parts I don't throw any of that stuff away. ourselves something that's similar to the bottom side of a trailer. So that is essentially what it's going to look like. And these, as you saw, I squared them up with each other, but no, I did not measure where they go. Just thinking about weight distribution. And I'm still going to have to do some kickers out, but I have to figure out where I want to put the axles on this thing and how many I want to put on it. So for the trailer, these are the axles that I went with. They are for a 1 14th scale big rig trailer. I got the widest ones that I could because they are the same ones that I used in the gooseneck trailer. So they've been really good. Haven't had a single issue with them. These are the wheels and tires that I went with. They are also for a 1 14th scale. The reason why I went with 1 14th scale instead of the 1.9 for the 110 scale trucks went with these because trailer tires are usually smaller than truck tires and these are cheaper for how many you have to buy because you buy them as a set already as a dually so that is why i went with those now i'm gonna mock them up see what they look like and see if i need to do a third axle on this thing because it's quite long. Here it is with the two axles. I don't know. I think that it could use three. I think it would look better with three. Kind of torn because I can move these closer together or further apart. I just have it balanced right now. But I'm going to stare at this for a little bit and see what else I can come up with. It's hard to tell, but we are at the front of the trailer. Now, I want to make some legs for it to be able to stand on because remember the truck 
can automatically or electrically disconnect from this thing. So I need it to have legs. There are some legs. Now the plan is, is to have a servo on this one, on the trailer as well, to fold the legs up. That's the plan. We'll see if it actually plays out. All I'm gonna do is weld a nut onto each one of these frame rails, connect these two together, hopefully evenly, and then have it pivot. Then the servo will move it up and down. That way the trailer will have legs to stand on. Here are my little legs. As you can see, that tab right there, that's gonna be hooked to a servo, which will push it until they're folded up. And then when I want them down, they'll come down. And I've been looking at it for a while now and with how long this thing is, two axles just isn't gonna be enough. So I'll get a third one, some more wheels and tires, and we'll have a triple axle trailer. Now some may be asking, Am I making this too complicated? Yeah, I am. But, like I said in the last video with the truck, this is all an experiment. I want to see how crazy I can go with this. So, this isn't the only electric thing that's going on this trailer. I have more ideas. We can get started on it right now. Well, there's your comparison size. How big the trailer is to the truck. Still probably have good six inches, six or seven inches there, and about four or five on the back. In total, this whole thing is probably gonna be around seven or eight feet long. Good thing I have a truck to tow it all, or to haul it everywhere with, because it's gonna need it. This is awesome. And welcome to a new day. Mounted a servo in here. Like I said, had a servo on the legs now, when the servo moves, now the legs come up. Okay, there's some adjusting that needs to happen, obviously, but I have legs that come down through the remote when I get one, because the remotes I have are not enough channels for what I plan on this entire build. Very high-tech solution here. Stops them straight up and down. Keeps it from moving. Now we're on to the axles. I did decide to go with three of them because it looked weird with just two and with how abnormally long I've made this. Actually, I made it just the right length. So I tried this one just to make sure that my idea would work. It's just some flat stock bolted to the trailer axles, like I said, they're, they're just some Amazon ones. Bolted it to it, took this bar, welded it to that, welded the nuts to the frame. So now it can pivot because I discovered with my other trailer, if you have suspension on it, like I did leaf springs, but even if you did links or whatever, it likes to tip over. So all the RCs just fall off of it. Then once I solid mounted them, it quit tipping over, but then it was basically riding on one axle, depending on the terrain that you were driving on. So I'm gonna do this. I might put one shock on each one just to limit the amount of travel and give it a little bit of suspension, but basically acts like a sway bar and still allows it to pivot. Gotta do a little grinding, but just gotta do that idea three more times. Well, two more times. So just a quick tip. If you're making a bunch of these brackets or any type of brackets for that matter, one for each side, or you want a bunch of them to match. This is just what I do. So take it or leave it. I make one, drill the holes, and then I use that as a template to then cut the correct length for the next one and to mark the holes so that way I know now that all six of these are exactly the same. Just a tip from me, that's what I do. Hopefully it will help somebody.
triple axles. Okay, so the legs are a little short, but I still have to put little pads on the bottom of them anyhow. But I want it short to be able to hook up to the truck. Not the vise, but the truck. You get it. So the reason why I did three independent like this is because when I go over bumps, they'll all move. Not that drastically. Go over a bump, they all move. And man, it's got a little bit of play. I'm gonna stiffen these up a little bit, make them a bit stronger. They're just tacked on. Yes, I just used nuts. No, it is not perfect, but it'll do the job. It is a trailer. It will hold a couple of RCs once it's done. Just remember, you're building these things for yourself. If you want to impress other people, then you can take extra time. Wait for a car to drive by. If you want this thing, if you want these trailers and trucks and everything to look really good, spend the extra time. I am spending my time, but I'm trying to experiment and see how much crazy stuff I can get on this thing. So we'll just move on from that now. Now I'm going to try to put ramps. So the idea is to use my third actuator like the truck had, put it in here. Probably going to have to notch that out a little bit, but I want to have ramps that fold up and fold down. That is the goal. So we'll get to it. All right, you join us on another day. Still working on the trailer. Got the axles on there. And I added that little shock absorber right there. There is no spring in it. All I'm using this for is to limit how far the axles can travel, which is still gonna be a good way. I just like to keep the look of the axles sitting on the ground as you drive along. I don't put suspension or springs in them because it just gets too top heavy, moves all over the place. So the gooseneck trailer, it's pretty much lock suspension, but it has a pivot point for the two axles. As you can see, it just has a pivot so that the axles can move, keep them on the ground at least. That's just two axles. As you can see, it's just hard mounted. So I like that better. They drive just fine when they're hard mounted. You can put suspension on them if you want. I prefer to just have them locked out. So now that I got that done, got all three right there. I have more shocks that I'll put on once it cools down. Now, I'm gonna work on some ramps for the back using the last hydraulic cylinder that I have, the short one. <laughs> to see because I have it standing up because it's four feet tall. I made brackets for the hydraulic ram. That little bracket right there is the part that this connects to. So let's get let's get it all plugged into the white truck and see if we can make this all work. First I'll clean up the bench because it won't fit. 
we have the truck wired up, turned on. Yes, I tested it off of camera. Had to make sure it actually works. Here are the legs. Say that's gonna make my life easy, not having to bend down. And then the ramp. Got the ramp on there. Got the actuator. And if my crawlers can't get up that little bit of a gap, I need to build bigger crawlers. So I think that's gonna be just fine. Well, at least the servo is strong enough to lift it up off of the table. And remember, I still have to put little skids on the bottom of those so that way they don't just dig into the ground. Well, I can say I'm very excited about that. No more having to get down on the ground and lower some legs or lower a ramp. No. Do it all through the remote. Lazy. Or smart. Work smarter, not harder. So now for the rest of the trailer, I'm just going to add some kickers down from here up to the outside, give that a little bit of strength. Not that it needs it because they are just RC cars, but give it some strength. And then I'll do a final weld on everything. Put some sheet metal onto the inside rail here and for the tires of the RCs so they can all sit on here, nice flat surface. So I'm gonna do all that. I have to make a little box in the middle for the battery because this one is gonna, the trailer is gonna have its own battery. Just have to make it extra complicated for that. But besides that, most of the trailer's done. Oh wait, I guess I need to put a hitch on it, don't I? Let's figure that out first. And as per usual, I went way overkill. It's a bit much. Got that all on there. Did this eye bolt, lots of thread in there. I did that on purpose so that way I can move how far out it needs to stick out when it's behind the truck if it needs to because you know you gotta turn. That is essentially all finished. All that's left to do to this thing is put some beauty plates on it, a little battery box. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that, I'll do that off camera. And you'll see the final product once that's all done. Let's see it with the truck and a tape measure because it's quite long. Yeah, I would say that's uh, a bit long. All the way back there. Have it hitched up. All the way there. Let's get a tape measure. There's our tape measure. Ramps are up. Come all the way over here. You will see that it is 87 inches long total. Just a little bit over seven feet long. That is one, two, three RCs that I can carry right there. This thing's gonna be so cool when it's all finished. All right guys, well, that's it for the trailer. I'll do all the cleaning up and everything like that off camera. It's just, all I have to do is finish welding. That's all the technical stuff that I'm gonna be doing with that trailer is the legs and the ramp. Really happy with how that came out. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned some stuff on how to build your own trailer. These are just ideas that I'm throwing out there for you guys. You can do it however you want to, and just remember that. In the next video, I'm gonna get back onto the truck. You guys have given me a lot of really good ideas for what to put underneath the bed in that blank spot. Some really fun ideas, and I'm gonna have some fun with it. For me, I'm just gonna get started working on the truck again. You have to wait one more week to see what ideas I decided to go with on this thing. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I still feel weird saying it, but please, like, subscribe, all that stuff it does help. You guys have been awesome so far. So really appreciate it all. So we'll see you guys next time. What was that?